Hello and welcome back to Jimbo's PC Builds. Recently I did a, another cooler compare video but this time I included the Red Dragon Reaper cooler and I compared it against other coolers on my new testbed rather than comparing it to the AMD stock cooler. Once I published that video a viewer of mine, Mark C, and thank you very much for your comment, said that there was no installation guide available for the Red Dragon Reaver cooler. Now the actual installation instructions that come with the cooler aren't the best, they're printed very small and you can't e easily read them at all. So I went to the Red Dragon website and the part isn't even listed there, there is no mention of a, even a CPU cooler on the Red Dragon US site. Also I went to YouTube and there are no installation guide videos for that cooler. So luckily I'd have taken some footage of the installation of the cooler on both the AMD and the Intel platforms. So I'm going to put them together and I'm going to do an impromptu guide on how to install the cooler on both Intel and AMD platforms. So as that sounds, I'm going to split this video into two parts. The first part being Intel and the first second part being AMD. All right. So without further ado, let's get to the Intel installation part of the video. Oh, and apologies in advance. The footage taken when I was doing the installs wasn't meant to be published, so I do apologise if the lighting, etc. isn't that great. But hopefully you'll get the general idea of what you're supposed to do. After installing the CPU, you're going to need to put some thermal paste on. The cooler itself doesn't come with any, as far as I remember. Um, you need to purchase your own. You can buy any from either Amazon or from any other retailer. The one I'm putting on here is a Noctua thermal paste. I normally go for the P method, which as you can see is one nice even blob straight in the middle of the CPU. The first part of the Intel install is to put studs into this ring to mount to the Intel motherboard. You get four studs and you'll notice that the actual stud itself, the end, is leaning more to one, one side. That's to give the ability to mount in both 775 and 115 motherboards. So if you put the stud in furthest away, it will mount to 1115. If you put it closer by turning it round, it'll be 775. I'm going to be installing on an 115 motherboard. So I'm going to put the stud in furthest away, and then I'm going to push it down, and you hear an audible click. And then you repeat that four times. Next, you need to place the mount into the holes in the motherboard. Put all four studs in line and then firmly press in. Keep in mind when you're mounting this that you've got to um, put the CPU cooler in and not um, clash with any um, coolers that you've got on your board. Once you've done that, as you can see, I've started putting the pins in. You need to put a pin in all four corners. The pins push through the studs basically making sure that the studs do not leave the motherboard once you apply pressure with the CPU cooler. So once you've got all four in, like that, you then need to make sure it's in properly and then apply the CPU cooler, putting the short end in first and then attaching the large end. The key to the AMD installation is making sure both the black paint and the retention um, clips that came with the uh, motherboard originally in place. If you took them off, which you um, may have done if you're installing the cooler when you've already had one installed, but normally if you're installing an AMD CPU for the first time, the retention clips will be in place. But either way, you need to make sure they're there by screwing them in at all four corners. Once the clips are in place, you need to place the cooler over Again, you need to put the shorter end, the one that's not got the big um, button to press down and apply pressure on one end, and then you push down with the bigger clip on the other side to make sure that the cooler is firmly in place. Then check to make sure there's no wobble. While those installation guides specifically cover the Red Dragon Reaver cooler, a lot of the points covered could be applied to a lot of other coolers. A lot of coolers on the Intel side follow the uh, bracket, stud and pin approach for installing the cooler. Also a lot of the AMD coolers continue to use the retention brackets that come with the AMD motherboards. So to that end the information that I've um, included in the videos will hopefully be useful not just for a Red Dragon install but also to any other CPU cooler, specifically air cooler install. 
All right, so I hope that's useful. And if you did find the information in this video useful, please don't forget to press the like button because as always, the likes are well appreciated. Also in the comments below, let me know what you thought of the install guide. Is this kind of information useful? When I've been covering CPU coolers, I've only really been comparing them in terms of the performance. I've not really been looking at guides on how to install them, etc. But if, you know, if that's something that may prove useful for everybody, then I'll obviously do more of these types of videos. Also, don't forget to subscribe because I have covered a lot of other cooler information and I'm going to continue to cover coolers going forward. So hit the bell icon and you will find out when I'm going to be releasing those cooler videos. All right, so that's it. Um, again, hope this was a useful video for you all. And as always, take care.